Margaret, um, <clears throat> it's been a while since we've met and chatted, and um, I was able to catch the premiere of the George Crumb piece, The Metamorphosis, at the National Gallery, and then that had a life of its own. Oh, the George Crumb work that he made for me. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, since then, that was the world premiere. I've toured it pretty much around the world, everywhere from Singapore and Melbourne and Moscow, <laughs> as well as Europe. Now, how did you wind up in Moscow with the George Crumb Metamorphosis? Ah, there was a festival of new music called Reformer Fest, and um, they asked me to open the festival, and I had the great honor and privilege of playing George Crumb's Metamorphosis in the Rachmaninoff Hall at the Moscow Conservatory. Unbelievable. And you were able to keep your composure playing in a room like that? <laughs> That's so history-laden, yeah. I yeah. would have been had tears streaming from my... That's, you know, it's, it's really... You, the, the weight of history can be... <laughs> <laughs> quite quite daunting but but it was okay I managed and um, also you know it was like bringing the piece home because Crumb's Metamorphosis is based is inspired by ten different paintings that George Crumb likes and that's his tribute to Mussorgsky's pictures at an exhibition so oh, of course. Mussorgsky right. was a, right. a Muscovite so it's perfect it's like bringing the piece this homage to Moscow. Sure, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't even make the connection. Yeah. You know, the first time that we met, which of course you don't remember. I do. Uh, I'm not memorable enough. Was when you played the four. It's called the four walls. John Cage's four walls at the Cage During the, Festival. the Cage Festival, and I don't even remember, what. Freer Gallery. Freer Gallery. 2012. 12. Because yeah. that was the centenary of of um, John Cage birth. Well, that was my first time I've ever seen you. You know, you're, le you're a legend, but I only got to catch you uh, well, well into your legendhood. And <coughs> I wasn't a legend yet. I <laughs> no, you were, a, you were a legend. And uh, so the first thing that struck me Don't about... Don't you have to be dead when you're a legend? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the, the goal is to be a legend before that happens. So what struck so you? <laughs> what really struck me, <clears throat> aside from the, the music itself, was the theatrical presentation. Every movement was choreographed that you did. I don't know if you realize that. And then we saw that again at the Hill Center where every every movement, every every step you take, and by the way, the children, if you recall, were completely entranced Not by a the squeak performance. out of them, right. <laughs> Pardon? Not a squeak out of them. <laughs> no! They they forgot that they were six and and they were completely memorized by mesmer, mesmerized because of the physical nature of, of the performance. Yes, you see, all that choreography is dictated by the music itself. It's not anything that's superimposed. The, the choreography is the result of what I need to do to make the music happen. Which brings us to the next piece, which you're premiering next month in yes. Australia, which this, is theatrical. Mm, this is my first fully fledged foray into theatre. I've done works that are, you know, semi-theatrical, like Phyllis Chen's Curios, which was made for me, a multimedia piece for toys and toy pianos and toy instruments. But this is a real um, theatre piece where I'm the protagonist on stage for an hour or a bit more. Uh, it's a sonic three-dimensional portrait of my life. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, and whose idea was this? Mine. <laughs> it was easier than sitting down and writing my, my um, memoirs. So I thought I'd make a, a, um, a sonic version and then that might inspire me to get it down on paper. That, that could be done in two hours or less. Yes, right. As opposed to 20 years of writing. I get it. I get it. It makes sense. Which you would never get around to in the 20 That's years of right. writing. Well, and, and why Melbourne? Because um, Dragon Ladies Don't Weep, which is the name of the Right. Dragon, lady, dragon Ladies Don't Weep. Dragon Ladies Don't Weep um, is a co-production between Singapore and Australia. And my theatre director, Tamara Solwick, is um, 
from Melbourne. Uh, and my composer, Eric Griswold, is from Brisbane. Mm. While my dramaturg, Kok Heng Lun, is from Singapore. Mm. So and it's it's a joint um, Australia Singapore production. And how long a run will it be in Melbourne? Oh, it's just premiering at the Asia Topa Festival, mm -hmm. the Asia Triennial of the Performing Arts Festival, and then after that, it'll travel um, to four performances at the Sydney Opera House, and then to five performances at the Esplanade Theatres on the Bay in Singapore. Oh wow! In March, yes. So we'll have to alert. Jack Lynn that that's coming in. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then something's coming up to Phillips, I believe, uh, in May, which we're very, all of us Washingtonians are very excited about. Ah. Oh, I'm getting some kind of an award from the Phillips collection. Right. At their annual fundraising gala. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And you don't know what kind of an award this is? Have they told you? Um, I guess it's is just it a one Roll of those recognition awards. Do you get a Rolls Royce? Or, uh, <laughs> I don't think you get anything. <laughs> but um, it's just a recognition of, uh, I guess, of what you've, you've done. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, uh, I'm planning to be there. Uh, it's on May 15th. Thank uh, you. In Washington. So, Margaret, thanks for uh, sharing a few words. And uh, um, the world, obviously, is quite excited about what's going on with you in the next year well we'll see this is a big step for me um, in my in my development or evolution to go full, you know to go um, into a piece that's 100% a theater piece not just theatrical elements within my um, concert performance but an actual theater piece where the script is actually made from my writings 100% is made from my writings, mm. um, my reflections, observations, um, stuff that I had meant to put in my memoir. <laughs> well, that's, that's a dream come true uh, uh, for anybody to, to have that opportunity. So, Margaret, thanks, and we're going uh, to catch up in May and uh, on the other side of this whole thing. Yes, I'll let and, you know uh, how it turned out. And we'll, we'll it may be a complete flop. <laughs> yeah, then we can sit around and... Uh... <laughs> then I'll go back to being a pianist. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Well, thank you very much, Margaret. Thank you.